First, does you have a question? No, no, another question. Can I come again, please? I was talking about the recent development that happened today. So far, we hear that uh, about uh, 41 hostages have been released uh, for Israel. And then the Foreign Affairs uh, spokesperson of Qatar said 39 Palestinians held by Israel are supposed to be released today. So far, what does all this development mean in the ongoing conflict? Okay, thank you for having me on your show. No, and if you are to mark the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas, there are many actors that are involved. And most efforts to as resolve the crisis have come from international humanitarian organizations. There are many solutions that have been proposed, humanitarian ports, humanitarian corridor, humanitarian ceasefire. But what we actually want is generalized ceasefire. I think Israel was the first to, act, to agree on four hour ceasefire before the four days ceasefire that was agreed, agreed upon that will ensure the release of 50 Israeli hostages against 150 Palestine hostages. So what all this show, what all this is showing is that I mean it shows that the pressure from the international community, mostly the international humanitarian organizations, is yielding positive results. Though we should not be optimistic here because the, the ongoing negotiation can be interpreted in two ways. One, it may be that it is probably one of the actors want a solution to the conflict. Probably maybe they are becoming weaker, they want a solution. Probably are, if that is what the case, it probably to be the Hamas. Or it may it may be an attempt for 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 either of them to rearm, to re militarize. In order to continue the, the all right, the, all right, Okumbo, let me just butt in here, you know, if I may. Now, per the terms of the Israel Hamas agreement, Israel said it would extend the pause in fighting beyond four days if Hamas right. agrees to release additional hostages. Where do you see all of that really headed? Because yeah. right now it's as though the ball is actually in Hamas's court. Of course, the Israel position has been that the solution to the conflict is that all those that were held hostage, hostage on the 7th of October should be released, which Hamas has not been able to comply with that. So, I mean, it shows that, I mean, as you say, the boy is on, I mean, Hamas to do what is needful and bring a solution to the conflict. But beyond that, no, the conflict is a proxy war. I mean, Hamas has countries that are supporting it in, I mean, in the in the, conf in the ongoing conflict. So the most the most important thing is that the actors that are involved should compromise on their interests for the sake of humanity, humanity because of the humanitarian catastrophe that mm -hmm. has happened since the war began. So oh. what I see is that I think the international community should, should continue in their effort in pressurizing the actors involved in this yeah. conflict. Okay, finally, because before we let you go now, um, uh, Festus, the deal itself is neither a resolution to the war nor to the roots of the conflict between Israel and uh, Palestine. Most people have uh, termed it as a significant development that is better than nothing. But what do you think is the long-term solution and the future of Gaza? Yeah. Firstly, from what is happening, from the war that break, broke out, Israel has been insisting that the post-war situation in Gaza should not be under the control of Hamas, and, and, which, and that idea is being supported by the U.S. But the U.S. is not in agreement with that. To me, I think the future of Hamas is to comply with the Austro Accord of 1993 that said, I, I mean, it is the Palestine that has to be under the administration of Gaza, which we, we cannot violate, we cannot compromise on that agreement. If we do that, that we, I mean, that we, that we, that we violated what we are trying to achieve in the Middle East, and it will not bring about a peace that we want. But in do that, Hamas should be forced to be comply with international regulation because of, on the part of the Western government, they are not interested in Hamas being in charge. And if we see that Hamas should be should not be in charge, it's like I mean, it's a compromise on their sovereignty. So I, I'm I can try to liken the post-war argument in in history to the to the to the Afghanistan conflict, All right. where 
the U.S. was not interested in Taliban being in charge of Afghanistan when, they, when it was invaded right, in, in 2001, and they were removed from the government. All right, but doctors. after 20 years of the Taliban persistence is not ready to give up, they were eventually allowed to come back to government in 2021. All right, so, sisters, uh, I'm sorry, we just have to let you go. We actually um, uh, have uh, run out of time on this particular discussion, but we'll bring you uh, uh, subsequently to talk more on the ongoing uh, crisis uh, between Israel and Hamas in subsequent bulletins. We do appreciate your time. Uh, sisters, you uh, Tokumbo is uh, a conflict and development analyst, and he joined us all the way from the United Kingdom. Many thanks once again. Thank you. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.